That sounds good. The end of the cable has no plastic coating, so it'll be much more sensitive to the cold than the rest. So let's see. <laughs> A thermal manifestation! Oh, my spirits. What lovely creatures. Hey, it worked. I feel bad about tricking Agatha, but I guess I've done worse things in my time. And with a lot less payoff than now. What about Agatha? Oh, there she is. Hey, Agatha, what are you doing here? Congratulate me, dear. They gave me permission. Congratulations. Who gave you permission and what for? Didn't you hear the ectothermal machine beeping? The spirits of the Kilgore brothers, the primordial energy force in this graveyard, have authorized me to proceed with my research on their turf. Oh, wow, how cool. So you need not fear anything any longer, dear. Just answer me honestly. Why is your tormented spirit still wandering through this world? Uh, because I'm not dead yet? Come on, are you sure? I'd bet my life on it, but there are other things I'm not so sure about. Oh, you have questions? Tell me, I'm your medium. What are you doing out here? Nothing, dear. I'm verifying the tests performed by the ectothermal scanning machine to check the sudden parabiothermal coldness detected in the Kilgore crypt. Heard any more voices from beyond the grave? What are you talking about, dear? Oh, no. Ever since I left that crypt, not a peep, not a wailing sob, not a boo, not a thing. What did you need to translate the manual into Swedish? If you find the grave of a Swede here in the graveyard, I can ask him or her to translate it for you. See you around, Agatha. Goodbye, dear. Okay, let's see what it's about. Yikes, could it be any spookier? It's a list of names with the dates and places of birth and death and the location of the person's grave. Organ player seeks employment for burials, funerals, religious services for the deceased, and divorces. Entertainment for birthday parties, too. Are you tired of visiting the same old graves every weekend? Spice up your morning with our Deceased Loved Ones Exchange Program. Yikes! They put up the rates they charge for funerals, a simple burial, full rights with pomp and circumstance. Hoo-hoo, spooky. According to the schedule on here, the chapel won't open again until tomorrow. Please don't put up no dirty messages, because the Reverend will get irked with me. Signed, Lou Ann, the maintenance girl. Tombs for everyone. Charity benefit in favor of dignified housing. If you wish to take part in the campaign, please contact Reverend McCormick during office hours. Rehabilitated cataleptic selling possessions at good price. Coffin, gravestone, stone slab, and five funeral wreaths, all in mint condition. To he who has stolen the flowers from my granny's grave, if I find you, the flowers are going on to your grave, you big weenie. Organ player seeks employment for burials, funerals, religious services for the deceased, and divorces. Entertainment for birthday parties, too. Why would I do that? Large families have more fun. Yeah, especially poor old mom and dad who work tirelessly without a wink of sleep so they can feed their huge litter of offspring. Huh. 
Huh? If a person is in this directory, that means they're dead, doesn't it? However... Eureka! Ingerman Holgren, born in Norcopping, Sweden, and his grave is in Sector D, Path 2, Isle... Here it is! But the truth is I don't know why I'm so incredibly happy. I mean, I just found a dead guy, and considering where I am, that's not exactly an amazing feat. Now that the spirits in charge around here are your friends, think you could help me with that Swedish manual? Oh dear, it completely slipped my mind. Now where was that poor man? Ingerman Holgren. Here he is. Now my dear, you just wait for me over there. But... I need some peace now to get my capacity for understanding to rise to the world of the spirits. Ingerman, I invoke you. Ingerman, come and show yourself. Oh, Monterinstruktione. Let's see what this book says. Instructions for. The assembly. Agatha, what you just did is absolutely amazing. Oh, my dear. You've no idea. Really, thanks to you, I have just what I needed. The fully translated Flicting Coffin Assembly Manual. Brian's text message said not to leave the cemetery, but I don't see what's wrong with approaching the front gate. Ernie, huh? you're still here? Gina Basco. How's it going, kid? Oh, uh, great, fine. I mean, actually terrible. I'm distraught. Um, thanks for attending the funeral. No, oh, well, I was Basco's favorite orderly, and he was my favorite nut job. How could I miss his funeral? What's more, Happydale didn't send anyone to it. But of course, with everything that's going on down there, that place is like crazy. Hey, Gina, I got a joke for you. You ain't nothing but a mad dog. <laughs> Why did you say the psychiatric hospital is like crazy? Haven't you heard, hon? Just two days ago, right when Brian keeled over, Two inmates escaped, and Dr. Bennett disappeared. An office ceiling collapsed, and a nurse who just got hired decided to quit. And she was some major eye candy, that little lady. Ooh -hoo -hoo. Which two inmates escaped? That'll be Jacob Kurgan and Gabo Spiegelman. From what I've heard, all three tried to skip the nut house together, but Brian got the worst part. Bennett disappeared? The same Dr. Bennett that was treating Brian? The very same. I don't know if he'd finished his report for the judge, determining whether Brian was crazy or not. But who cares at this point? Could you tell me about everything that's happened lately at Happy Dale? Why, sure. Two inmates escaped, and Dr. Bennett disappeared. An office ceiling collapsed, and a nurse who just got hired decided to quit. Don't you think it's weird that so many unusual things happened in such a short time? Nope. It's like that movie. Unfortunate events always seem to happen in a series. Uh, getting back to our last topic. Don't call me Basco. My last name is Timmons. So, you're ashamed of Basco. I mean, of Brian. Wow. 
and he never stopped talking about how much he loved you and what a hottie you were. And he wasn't hallucinating either. <laughs> Brian and I aren't married. I'm not really sure what you'd call our relationship. Well then, you're not a widow, and he's nothing more than a deceased friend. I'd hate to have to give up my father's last name. I've already abused it so much as it is. Well then, were you using your own name in that place where you used to dance? I thought you would have made up some kind of stage name, like Bubbles or Candy Cane. How do you know about that? Damn Brian, he's gonna hear from me. He's gonna learn to keep his big fat mouth shut. Uh, I don't mean to take sides, but I think Brian's already learned a thing or two about keeping quiet. I'm not ashamed of Brian, no matter how nerdy he can be. He's the kindest man I've ever met. Well, considering the string of gems you've come across in the past. I mean, Brian told me all your exes were, you know, not very recommendable bachelors. Just drop it. My last name is none of your business. Okay, babe. There's something I need to tell you about Brian. Shoot, babe. I'm all ears. Did you notice anything strange about him in his final days? You know what, babe? I think Brian knew he had something coming. He was nervous-like. Couldn't stop pacing around, talking to one guy, then another. It's as if he had a sixth sense, telling him, Get a move on, kid. Things are almost over with here. Wait, I almost forgot. Brian's the one with the bag. Looks good on him, huh? Clearly he adapted to his new environment pretty well. Yeah, well, we took this picture the day before, Brian. You know, just keep it. It's all yours. How original. I didn't know people gave gifts at funerals, but thanks. Nothing's too good for my favorite brunette, darling. If I hadn't fallen in love with Luann today, I'd have done even more. Did you hear him talk about some place he would have liked to visit? Uh, not that I can remember now, no. What do you know about Brian's attempted escape? Nothing. Just what people were saying. That he tried to escape through the air ducts, and that his head got chopped off by a big fan. Poor nut job. Who else could tell me more about Brian's final days? The guys who knew Brian best at Happendale were Dr. Bennett, who's now missing, and his fellow escapees, Jacob Kurgan and Gabo Spiegelman. You're going to have a hard time, babe. One other thing. I guess nobody doubts Brian is dead. Like, totally dead, right? Well, maybe I shouldn't tell you this. But there's rumors that when they found him, he was a bit... Oh, how, how should I put it? Headless? I know, Ernie. I'm the one who identified his body. Oh, babe. That's horrible. Then why are you asking this stuff? Who'd know better than you? What did you really think about Brian? Well, Ernie already told you. Brian was his favorite nut job. What do you mean? Do you think Brian murdered Cordsmeyer? Cordsmeyer was that military brass, right? Hey, I don't know, babe. Maybe he did and maybe he didn't. You never know with these nut jobs. Do you really think Brian was insane? Obviously, babe. Crazier than a cuckoo. By the way, Brian is alive. Babe, Brian will always be alive in our memories. But you need to turn the page and live your own life. Once I get over this Luann thing, I'll call you up and help you. Maybe I just need to get used to not talking about Brian all day long. It's normal, babe. He's always on your mind. Well, well, you sure kept the thing about Luann all to yourself. How'd you find out? Ernie, it's easier to catch a man red-handed than a child. Want to know something else? I'd love to know how you met. Well, it wasn't the best time, but I noticed her during the funeral. Then... When she started trimming some hedges, I went over and showed her my hearty, and we ended up making a date for the bowling alley. You just drive her crazy. She wants to jump your bones. And Ernie here wants to jump hers, babe. Don't get me wrong. You're a hearty too, but she is blonde, of course. You make a great couple. She is a hunk of love. 
I can't remember the last time I fell for such a sizzling number. Why, it's been hours. Don't worry, she'll be out soon. I hope so, because I really want to hit them pins. Don't get the wrong idea, though. I never make out with a girl on the first date. Except when I want to. I bet you could spend all day talking about her, but I can't. Babe, if you were into Luann as much as Ernie is, well, we'd have us a problem. Or on second thought, hmm, things could get interesting. <laughs> See you later, Ernie. Later, babe. <laughs>